Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready? Can we make requests from the Lord for our daily bread? Join me in faith now. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Hey, we're approaching Christmas. And listen, this is a season to show love. Not by wishing, but Merry Christmas. Show love. Send a gift out to someone. Make someone's life better. Put a smile on someone's face. That's the godly thing to do in this season. And don't join that, those arguments. Hey, Jesus was not born 25th of December. And so what? We have all chosen this day to celebrate Him. Until the Lord speaks to us and tells us clearly, this is the day that Jesus was born. And then Jesus never told us to celebrate His birthday. But we chose this day to celebrate Him. And there's nothing wrong with that, praise God, because they way of exalting Him. But remember, truly, the reason for the season is Him. And so honor Him. And how do you honor Him when you honor His reason for coming? He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. So believe in life, number one, for yourself. And number two, in others. Be available and ready to give others life. That's how we celebrate Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now then, we are talking about tithes and offerings. Now, you remember, I told you when we started this series that the reason for these instructions God gave is so that we will acknowledge Him. We will acknowledge Him. That's the reason that God gave concerning all these offerings. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Take note of this. He said, you will remember the Lord your God, for he is the one that gives you power to get wealth. Now, here, this statement guarantees every child of God wealth. This statement, I'll repeat it, guarantees every child of God wealth. Now, this statement also lets us know and understand that the wealth is given. You shall remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. Now, I know some people have tried to twist the scripture, say to create wealth or to make wealth. He said he gives you the power to get wealth. Now, that's to tell you, you need power to get this wealth. And the power to get the wealth comes from God. Now, he says now the reason for the wealth. Now, this is, this is one scripture we are dissecting. The reason for the wealth is that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers. So, there is a reason for the wealth that he's giving you power to get. Okay? Okay. So, one, 
He gives you the power to get wealth. Two, the wealth is not because he likes your face. The power to get wealth is not given because he, he just sits down and says, Oh, I just want to help you. No. The power to get wealth is coming because of an initial covenant that God had made with the fathers. Actually, Abraham. No, he said that you that in the covenant which he made with your fathers. Okay. Can we go into that? God told Abraham, I will bless you and make you great. And God said to him, In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, when you study, I've told you before, this is not a Bible study class. But as I teach you, I expect you to go pick up your Bible and do the study. So there are pointers I will give you. You go study it for yourself. God blessed Abraham. God blessed Isaac. God blessed Jacob. Now go study everything God told them when he was pronouncing the blessing to them you will notice that there is one consistent thing that kept repeating in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What is that? In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And that's not a small statement. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He said it to Abraham. He didn't say in you all your generations will be blessed. He said the same thing to Isaac. He said the same thing to Jacob. And when he was making these things, this same promise to Isaac and Jacob, he made reference to Abraham. Meaning, I'm not just telling you this. I'm making reference to what I told Abraham. Now you are the one here. And I'm telling you, I confer this blessing on you. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He got to Jacob and said, I confer this blessing on you. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, God didn't just pronounce these words. God came into covenant with Abraham. Some people don't understand that when Abraham met Melchizedek, a covenant was cut. There are two major covenants God had with Abraham. I've done some teachings on this, but see, there is nothing wrong in repeating it again and again. So if you didn't hear it now or understood it then, you will understand it now. There are two main covenants God caught with Abraham. The covenant of provision, that represents the titan. Then the covenant of protection, that's the circumcision. And in both covenants, you see, do you remember when Abraham met Melchizedek? Melchizedek came with bread and wine. Now the Bible didn't give us the details of what they discussed in that meeting. It's as though Abraham just saw me. Oh, and, and then there's this, this little confusion about who Melchizedek was. I've read some people, you know, I've heard some people say, oh, he was a, an earthly king that reigned. You know, and, and some people have claimed, now I actually saw this in the book of Jesha, uh, that Melchizedek was called Shem. Now you know Shem, Shem, the son of Noah. So some people believe Shem, who was like the custodian of God, uh, godly principles in those days, was the one who 
who was now the priest of God, so who was Melchizedek. Now, in Hebrews, the author of Hebrews is unknown. Many assume it's Paul, but when you study carefully, you realize that it's not Paul. Although the person was associated with Paul, because if you look at the end of Hebrews, he, he spoke about Luke. Now Luke walked with Paul. So he spoke about the other brethren. So whoever the writer of the book of Hebrews is, he was, is it Paul or Timothy now? He spoke about, I think it was um, the book of Hebrews spoke about Timothy here. Yeah. So whoever the writer of the book of Hebrews was, uh, must have been related with Apostle Paul. You see, now that's, that's also to tell you that uh, there are several books that were written that we don't have. See? So, because you have several authors, several people who wrote things now. Also, kindly remember that most of the epistles of Paul were personal letters he was writing to believers that he had mentored. See? So, it's not like he sat down and said, I want to write what will be added in the Bible. No. They were personal letters. Now, there are several other materials that are out there. Sometimes people find themselves going, eh, please, as, as long as it's not in the Bible, as long as it's not a canonized scripture, I don't want it. And I always ask myself the question, who canonized these words that you're reading? How Holy Ghost filled were they? What instructions did they receive? I've spoke to you some time back about how the King James Bible came about. Go do the research for yourself. Sometimes this understanding gives you, this background help you to know that there is something more. See that now? And that's why I said, look, Jesus didn't leave us with this book. He didn't leave us with this Bible, King James Bible that we have. <laughs> Praise God. No, he left us with the Holy Ghost. So allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Okay, so in, in the book of Joshua, it was, it was written that Abraham met Melchizedek was Shem. So Abraham gave him his tithes. But then the writer of the book of Hebrews now comes and says, this Melchizedek, there is something special about him that we have to discuss later. So when you read Hebrews chapter 5, it says, this Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say, but you cannot understand it now. Now, no common sense will let you know that the writer of Hebrews was privy to certain informations that we may not have today. He may be privy to certain writings or certain materials that we may not have today. It might exist, but you see, we've not discovered them yet. So, I, I, I want you to understand, because this is, this is very important for you to understand tithing. This is so important. Le, let, me, let me show you book of Hebrews. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shkalom Agadania. It says, mm, mm. And having been perfected, verse 9, Hebrews chapter 5, and having been perfected, he became the author of, of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as high priest according to the author of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain. Since you, are, you have become dull of hearing, Oh. It says, Jesus was made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And then he says, this man Melchizedek, we have a lot to say about him. Now, when you see things like this in the Bible, it should drive you to pray. Because if the writer of Hebrews have something to say about Melchizedek, it means he knows something. Now, I may not know that thing, but I have access to it. How do I have access to it? The Holy Spirit is there for me. If this person had the Holy Spirit, 
and he's just giving a clue and said, this man, there is a lot to say about him. Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain. Why is he hard to explain about an earthly king? Why? He was a king that ruled from here to here. And he was, the book of Kings wrote about all the kings that ruled in Israel. See? But then he said, this man, we have a lot to say, but hard to explain. Now, why is it hard to explain? It's not because I cannot explain it. But you, when I, if I enter that angle, you will not catch what I'm saying. So, I was studying, um, I was studying the book of Jasher. And then I, I, I came across this. And I came across where he said, now nah, I knew this truth already, so it's not like I just discovered it. So I saw how he wrote it. Melchizedek, who was Shem? Then I went back to the history was given about Noah, his sons, and, and all and all and all. And I said, no, something is wrong here. Something is wrong here. The way he wrote Melchizedek was Shem. It appeared to me that this is the witness I had in my spirit. Whoever the writer of the book of Joshua is. Now, Joshua wasn't speaking as though these things were revealed to him. Joshua was speaking as though um, these are the stories that were handed down to them, okay? So it appears, now, now, I'm combining these two together. Now, he goes on, Hebrews now, chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, now, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, um, verse 19. Let me start from verse 19. He said, This hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both show and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For this Melchizedek, chapter 7, verse 1, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priests of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, being first translated king of righteousness and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Okay, if he was a physical king, why is Hebrews telling us about him now? Say he doesn't have father, he doesn't have mother. No genealogy, meaning we can't even trace his seed. See, everybody that have been born, have their, they got married, they have their seed. You can tell this person came from this one. This one came from um, Shem. This one came from uh, Japheth. This one came, you understand what I'm saying? But then, he said, but this Melchizedek, there was something different about him. He was a priest of God, yes. But he had no mother, he had no father. No, he didn't say we didn't know his mother. He said he had none. He had no beginning of days. He had no end of days. So this old man, we don't know where he came from. Who were his mates? Who were his parents? No, no. Who were his, who were born around? No, no one knew. Um, who were his children? Nobody knew just showed up. So why did the book of Joshua say it was Shem? I'll tell you that there are manifestations of God that have happened. I've explained this many, some time back. Now those manifestations are actually the word of God being made flesh. Jesus was not the first instance the word of God was made flesh. Jesus was the first instance that the word of God was made flesh and it was dwelling among us. There are several instances that there are appearances of God in scriptures 
Now, what those appearances were the word of God made flesh. Melchizedek was one of such. Now, when, when God appears, he can be seen. It's not only you that will see him. There are instances where angels have appeared and, and walked on the earth. I'm not talking about then, I'm talking about now. Now, when they appear like that, people will see them, not only you. So an angel comes and says, oh, that man that came to um, carry you, that man that saved you, that man that isn't, yeah, please, where is he? He went this way, so they all knew where he went. But then, they start searching for him like, ah, where has he gone? No one knows. There are instances like that. Now, when those things happen, sometimes they appear, because they don't want to appear mysterious also, they want to appear normal. So, they appear like someone who, you will say, um, well, I think he's a pastor from that place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But then you go look for him, you cannot tell. So one is relaying the st story. I said, a man appeared. I think he's a pastor from so and so place. So someone takes that part of the story and believes that's it. But not necessarily so. Like I said, the writer of the book of Hebrews had information that were deeper than what the book of Joshua wrote. So when he says this man had no desire, so someone must have done that investigation and realized that, uh-uh, Melchizedek was not shame. And truly speaking, I can tell you by the revelation, Melchizedek was the word of God made flesh. We'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.